Hey everybody, these are the instructions for writing assignment one. I thought I'd walk you through them. Um, the assignment itself is not particularly difficult, but you are working with some more intellectually challenging information, and I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, one of the things I'm providing for you is, and I guess I should open that up for you as well so that you can see that. Alright, so I've got the main types of primary myths. This is a, a, a um, document from William G. Doty, who's written um, widely on mythology, and he has a way of organizing. We're going to look at lots of different ways of organizing myths throughout the semester, but he looks at them as um, what he calls kind of primary myths. Um, so what he's doing, it's a little different from what we were doing with functions, um, but still related. He is looking at myths as containing information about these ten different categories. Um, and he uses some, uh, again, some academic vocabulary. And for the most part, as I went through this document, I... Um, define terms as I came to them. So as I went through, if I found a word that I thought like here's a shadological, a teleological, if I thought perhaps you wouldn't be familiar with that word, unless you've had uh, I mean, a, a, a religion course or a mythology course before, you may not have come in contact with these terms, I went ahead and um, defined them for you here. So he has these different categories, myths that reflect on the natural environment, myths that talk about plants and animals, um, myths that kind of focus on lifestyles, and maybe not even focus, but that just contain this information, that talk about life cycles and phases, or different kinds of human behavior, particularly types of human behavior. Um, myths that kind of list different um, mythological figures and characters and animals. Um, myths that talk about ritual. So these are all just categories that he uses to examine myths and so, to, to look at them. And, and this helps um, academics look at myths from different cultures. So you might look at a myth from um, Zaire and one from China and one from Norse mythology. And this gives you a set of categories to help you compare them, to look at them side by side in a way that might make sense. Under each one of these categories, um, Doty has provided a list of things that might appear in that category. So in category that provides um, accounts of origins, there might be cosmogonic myths, there might be myths um, talking about causes and sources for cults, there might be talking about zodiacs or taboos or social order. All those topics could show up under his category called providing a tea, a tea, um, etiologies and accounts of origins. Um, in myths that reflect on the natural environment, there could be myths that explain the natural forces of the physical world, that talk about fire and flood and catastrophes, myths that talk about agriculture or writing, myths that talk about the world tree, like Yggdrasil in Norse mythology, or that talk about the wind. So these are all just topics that show up under these categories. So is that starting to make sense how this is organized? We have a topic, animal, uh, a category, animal and plants, that Doty came up with. And under that you have topics that may be considered. Uh, other animals might be here as well, right? But these are just some that he listed for examples. So that's all this uh, particular document does. And of course there are lots of terms that I've defined for you. That's what makes it a little longer. But I just copied all of his categories and all of his topics to give you a whole lot of things that you can work with so you don't feel constrained. Now, in the other document, let me see if I can find it beyond all my taping stuff here, is the assignment. So, um, in his works, I'm right here, Doty explains that mythologies reflect the socio-historical political context in which they arise. What he means is that when we read a myth, what we're doing is seeing that culture fresh in front of us, right? We're seeing how, how their, their views on marriage, on farming, on animals, just any kind of their views on life and death, any kind of topic you can think of. 
what myths do is illustrate for us, give us examples of how these people fought, right? So that's as close as we can get to some of these ancient people. Right? They didn't have writing. This was all oral information that wasn't written down until many, many centuries later. So we don't have particular authors that we can refer to. These are just stories told by people to pass down their culture, their views. Um, so it, this is the most important sentence here. It is not unusual to find a single myth providing insight into several topics at once, particularly if it's a long myth. So these are all the categories that I showed you on the second document. What I've done is gone in and explained each category. So the first one's called explicating the world surround. Well, that's kind of a mouthful. What does that mean? In this category, we find topics that do have to do, that have to do with creation. Um, oh, I fixed this and I didn't, didn't upload, I guess. Where did we come from? Who made us? Another category, animals and plants. Again, there's some overlap with other categories, but myths in this category establish the roles of various animals and explain their importance. Um, there's a category called setting cultural modes. There's some overlap again. In these categories, you're going to find they're overlapping. These myths establish things like kinship ties, who's related to whom, um, acceptable social behaviors and unacceptable taboos, educational and religious values, and explanations of role models, etc. So I've gone through and explained each one of Doty's categories. And in the second document, um, it, he gives, I, I have all of his categories and some different topics under each one that give you some idea of what you should be looking for. Um, let's see. So your task is to explore four of the myths from module one, um, module one, the module we're in right now. now at least one of the myths must be a destruction myth. So um, you could have a combination of things, but at least one myth must be destruction. Examine each of the myths in light of the topics in various categories. So let's say I'm interested in an Egyptian creation myth about Jeb and Nut. There are lots of Egyptian creation myths, but I want to talk about this particular one. And in this myth, they're separated from each other. As I read the myth, I'm also noticing elements from the religious ritual realm and the plants and animals category. So um, the animals and plants category and the religious ritual realm. All right. So I'm noticing some of those things showing up in, in the myth as well. All right. So I would explain the elements as I understand them in the Jeb and Nut myth. And I'd do that for each of the others as well. So you should have four sections to your, your um, response. I want it arranged as a formal essay, and I've provided a sample down here for, for you to look at, right? I'll look at that in a moment. Um, and you should have a separate topic in a sentence introducing that myth in the paragraph, and lots of details with no research. This is not a research assignment. Um, if I see any research, whether it's cited or not, I'll give you a zero and make you do it again, because I, I want this all from your own information. And your essay should be a minimum of 500 words. So I've got this example for you. It's just a sample introduction and first body paragraph. There would be several more body paragraphs added on, right? So I got my name and all this kind of header information. And again, you see the footnotes, so you can go to the bottom of the page and see what all it is. I've got my title. All right. So I'm looking at cultural, uh, setting cultural models and life cycle phases. I'm, and I have found those in different myths, so I'm going to look at the same thing. You, you can organize it any way you want. So my, my introduction starts off, besides their primary function, myths can also have many secondary purposes for the culture, oh, again, I'm going to have to fix this, I did this very quickly, the culture in which they develop. The creation and destruction myths of Egypt, Japan, the Hopi, and Vedic India all have as their primary function the explanation of how the world came to be and how it will be destroyed. All right, they're creation myths that I've selected, right? However, by examining the function categories of William Doty, it's easy to see that these creation myths provide much more to the believers than the story of creation. The first creation myth to be examined is the Egyptian myth of Jeb and Nut. So you want to start off each paragraph telling me what you're writing about, right? This myth explains that. Okay, what is the myth about? The creation of whatever. From Doty's list, it is apparent that the myth also provides insight into setting cultural models. In the myth, Jeb does what that explains cultural models? Or, yeah, setting cultural models. So in each myth, I'm going to explain what I understand from Doty's 
topics for this myth to be about. Okay, so that should be enough to get you started. Um, I will, um, if I have time, I'll see if I can add to this, but at the very least, at least I'll fix my uh, typos for you. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and I'll see if I can dig up a sample too from a previous semester. I think you would find that helpful as well and, and get that posted.